Hello and welcome to another video about the construction of phase two of Heaton Lodge Junction. My name's Simon George. Now, we're not up at Heaton Lodge Junction, of course. We're up on the Settle Carlisle line again. This time I am at Garsdale Station, which is one station along from Dent Station. Uh, another one of my favourite places. I thought I'd have a weekend away instead of being buried in the basement track laying. So uh, anyway, in today's video, I'm not sure what's in it at all. Apart from we're going to be doing a bit of weathering. I'm going to be doing a bit of speed track laying. And um, yeah, that's all I've got penciled in for the moment. So hang on for the ride and here we go again. So in between working on the uh, track laying, I've actually just been trying to make the buildings which stand atop of this big um, cement factory building. Of course, it's building number one from uh, most of you will remember. The, um, the building that's on top that sits on this shoulder part here, it's just popping up on your screen now, um, looks like it's a couple of tanks on... Um, stilts so to speak so i bought this ratio kit in double o because obviously there's nothing comparable in o gauge um hoping to kind of modify it but it's just going to be the 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 double o gauge uh, struts are just not substantial enough really so i was i was hoping to kit bash it and make it into something like a tank with a tank on top instead of a hopper but it's not going to work so the last couple of days, I've just been scratch building one out of Plastruct. So I've just used this girder, some um, Plastruct girder, uh, some brass rod or uh, sheet, if you like, uh, just to make the cross members. And I'm just going to use this Wills plastic uh, sheet, which is pretty thick, as most of you will know if you've used this before. And I'm just going to make the tank to go on top like so um, you can butt up or just kind of file the side so these will make really nice right angles so you won't you shouldn't be able to see the join so this building just to clarify is going to go i say it's not even a building is it it's just a structure and there's two of them and if i climb up my steps hang on, that is going to sit there you can see i've just filled that uh window in because uh, on the one that I'm copying uh, miniature wonderland in Germany uh, there was a few of the windows that were filled in which is a good idea actually because I'm sure the real thing was exactly the same so that's going to sit there there's going to be another one there and they're going to be connected by some sort of walkway with the tank on top so there's a few I think really what I'm going to have to do is either kit bash um, 
some double O gauge uh, models which are kind of a bit more substantial to go on these huge buildings or I'm going to have to resort to resin printing because there's so many different shapes and structures that I need especially for the other four buildings in the uh, cement factory complex there's funnels and pipes and all sorts of weird wonderful shapes and I think the only way around it is, is going to be uh, resin printing so I think I'm going to teach myself how to do the software so I can feed it to a resin printer. Tim Horn from Tim Horn Base Sports is going to help me too. So that's great. He's got a couple of resin printers. I still love these radio control models, which I showed last week. They're absolutely super. I can't, I can't stop watching this cement mixer's barrel rotating. I've still got to do this in the blue circle cement livery. And incidentally, on top of this building here is going to be the uh, blue circle cement big hoarding that's all going to be lit up so um yeah that's coming on nicely i, I quite enjoy doing all the the kit bashing and the uh making stuff scratch building stuff i tend to do it in an evening uh when i finished here which uh, it's a good job i'm not married because i'll be divorced by now but uh, it's therapeutic and i enjoy it so there we go but this is coming on well and uh let's go back to the baseboard anyway and I'm just going to update you with the uh, with some extension carts So for those of you who haven't watched my videos before, I'm just going to quickly clarify what I'm doing here because, again, these uh, where the track is now is the new marshalling yard. This used to consist of the old fiddle yard of which I'm taking up all the tracks slowly. I've got to just about where that cardboard box is laying the new track and there's another 30 metres beyond which is coming up uh, as we speak and being relayed with the new track layout. But what I have done to extend the width um, is use these extension carts, which is these things here, which pull out. They're on wheels, as you can see. They're just built out of um, steel sections with really heavy-duty casters on. And there's two reasons why I've done this. The first um, is just simply to make them easier to transport because some of these carts are going to be carrying really heavy buildings like the one you've just seen, and I don't fancy carrying... A huge building onto the back of a truck these are much easier because you can just roll them onto the back of a truck and i need as most of you know five articulated trucks to move the layout in one go um one the other reason for having these uh, extendable carts is simply if i have any derailments here i don't have to climb up on top of these and re-rail anything i can simply unclamp using these clamps the carts from the main section of the layout and pull it away and get in there or somebody else can get in there to um, re-rail everything. But the news is this week, since I last saw you, is I have had five more delivered. So I can, I've just ordered the sheet, uh, the plywood to go on top. So again, these are just going to be covered now with plywood. This one here, interestingly, is, as you can probably see, is 15 centimeters lower than the others. And the reason for that is this is where the Healy Mills, um, which is just popping up on your screen now that Steve Smith from Railway Laser Lines is building, um, that's gonna go on its own baseboard, which is gonna sit here. That's 15 centimeters high. So obviously with the baseboard here, it should just be about flush with the edge of that blue, uh, normal baseboard in the middle there. So hopefully that'll work out all right. The one problem that I've got to contend with that I didn't bank on is 
it's dead easy to clamp these to the side of the layout and to clamp them to each other using temporary Irwin clamps um, and to take them off again. But with this one, obviously there's no, no way I can clamp it to anything. So I think what I'm going to have to do, because it's obviously too low to clamp to the baseboard and too low to clamp to the one next to it. So I'm going to have to work that out. I think what I'll have to do is get my little welding friend to come and put some uprights on the end here so I can somehow clamp it to the one next to it. There's problems like this all the time that you come across. And I guess it's just, you know, there's so many new things with uh, a layout of this size. You've just got to kind of find ways through them and not, not make it, or not try and make it overwhelm you. But the, um, the, other two, the other two carts are pretty straightforward. These have got a little bit wider. And uh, these are three foot six inches wide. And there's one which is four foot wide here. So I think the whole width of the layout is four foot plus five foot plus another 18 inch, so it's, it's about, well actually, it's another couple of foot somewhere too. So it's probably about 12 foot, which sounds a lot. And I know people are gonna be watching this shaking their heads and thinking this guy's an absolute nutter. Well, you're probably right there. But um, it will be easy, as I've said earlier, to just pull these uh, apart when there's any derailments. Uh, I'm gonna just nip over the other side and show you how I'm extending the other side as well, because I've not, I've decided not to extend the other side with uh, these carts, A, because of expense, but B, because I've come up with a, a nifty little solution that uh, might interest some of you. Let's just nip over to the other side. Okay, let's take a look at how we're going to extend the layout or the marshalling yard on this side. Uh, before I do, though, this, interestingly enough, is what I'm going to be using to carry the back scene. I used these, actually. Uh, exhibitions in the past and they just pop up stands I don't know if the camera can pick that up all right but they fold down to almost nothing and they're going to be very useful you can get them direct from China and they're so much cheaper than buying them online I think each one of these is about 200 quid if you buy them online but uh, if you get them direct from China uh, and you get them in bulk they're much much cheaper they're literally about 30 40 quid so these are going to go all the way down carrying a huge back scene um, the rendition of which, I don't know what it's going to portray yet, but we'll leave that to a bit later on. But that's going to be the back scene anyway. So back to the extension. I was going to use, uh, just like the extension carts you've seen, I was going to use extension carts down this side. But I only needed about 18 inch wide uh, an extension here, simply because it's only going to carry scenery. And I was just reading a book the other day and put it back on the shelf and then just suddenly realised, well, why don't I just use shelving units? So that is what I've done. And I've just come up with the idea of, I got some shelving units from Wix and I cut the racking, as you can see there, and just put the shelving unit, uh, you know, the metal shelf there, and then screwed the plywood to it. And all that's going to do is just carry maybe, I'd say, probably two kilograms, absolute max, of polystyrene scenery. And it's going to run. It works really well, actually. I'm quite pleased with this because it's, it's cheap, even if you buy them in bulk as well, compared to those extension carts. And that's going to run all the way down there, about 40 meters. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be a cheap and easy way of just having the embankment, the polystyrene uh, scenery embankment, which is going to run all the way down the side of the layout on this side, on the inside. There's only going to be one building on the embankment, and that is going to be the one that's popping up on your screen now, which is the admin building that used to be at Healy Mills. It's been long since knocked down, obviously, but uh, that's going to sit on the embankment, and there's going to be a footbridge from that, which crosses all these tracks here, and then just drops down to where the shed's going to be, which is a bit further along where those new extension carts are as well. So that is going to be, um, that's just one headache out of the way that I've come up with. Um, but, you know, I do have days down here where, and I'm sure you guys are the same, where you go home on a night or you, you come down from the attic or wherever your layout is in the garage and you're just scratching your head and you've had a bad day and uh, things aren't working out. But the only advice I can give you is what I've said in the past, and that is 
whenever you're confronted with a problem with a layout, whether it's track lane or scenery or whatever, try and overcome it that same day and try and leave the layout, you know, in a good frame of mind. So you're, you're looking forward to going back because if you go, if you go down from the attic or come back from the garage and uh, start watching Coronation Street, you're not going to want to go back the next day. And I found um, that, you know, I try and leave doing something I like. So it gives me more motivation to come back the next day. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's where we are. This track is looking really good, though. These, as some of you will know, are the sidings for the MGR coal trains, the down sidings. The main lines are on the right. And again, these uh, tracks, which we covered the other week as well, are simply, uh, what are these now? I can't even remember. These are the general MGR sidings. And then there's more MGR sidings over the other side as well. So there we go. Now, in other news, the reason I've done these extensions here um, is simply because I just wanted to let you all know that over the next couple of months, what I have, have decided to do to make these videos more interesting, really, is we are going to, together, we're going to completely scenic this area. We're going to do two boards. We're going to do board number 75, which is this one, and 76, which is this one. So basically what I'm trying to say is we're going to scenic it totally. So there's going to be signals. There's going to be the, uh, this sort of surface that we did in a past video, uh, in the middle, there's going to be an admin building here too. Uh, there's going to be the landscaping and the uh, embankments here. And I'm just going to well, show you sounds too pompous, but I just want to show you how I do the scenery, including ballasting, including spraying, uh, spraying the track first, then ballasting, uh, and all the infilling work is going to be stagnant water, all sorts of stuff to make this extremely, hopefully, realistic and exactly to the level of detail that you've seen on the phase one of Heaton Lodge Junction that uh, most of you have seen on the videos and a lot of you have seen in the flesh. So we're going to be doing that over the next few weeks. So you'll be able to see everything from balloting the track all the way up to the actual finishing touches. Um, even the old cookers thrown down embankments and everything, everything's going to be done. The reason I'm going to be doing this, as I've just said, is not just to make the videos interesting, but I want to see how long it takes me. I'm going to do it as fast as I can and we're going to time it. So I'm hoping we can do two boards, these two boards you're looking at now, I'm hoping we can do the whole lot in a month and ballast it, paint it, infill it. And so it's exactly like it will appear in the next exhibition when this layout goes in, out in whatever, 18 months time or whatever. So you're going to be following that and I hope uh, you're going to find it really interesting. So this coming week, I'm going to start laying the drop. I'm going to start uh, soldering the droppers to all the track because none of this track is electrified yet. I'm going to be, um, yeah, dropping the droppers through the, uh, through the holes in the baseboard, uh, ready for ballasting on the next video, which is the most monotonous, as everybody knows, it's just, yeah, it's mind numbing, but it's got to be done and it's got to look right. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And over the next few weeks, we're going to work together on this and we're going to just see exactly how a small proportion just 12 foot, or in fact, eight foot uh, wide by 12 foot wide, sorry, eight foot long by 12 foot wide is going to look in the end. So yeah, keep watching the next few weeks because we're going to have some fun here. We're going to probably make a load of mistakes, but it's going to be fun. I've mentioned this before, but these horrible big holes in the baseboard are just some, basically from when the uh, fiddle yard was there. And I didn't expect it to be in front of the public at the time. So I wasn't bothered about drilling massive holes for point motors and all the rest of it because I didn't think it would be seen. But I'm going to have to fill them and cover them up. 
So yeah, that is what we're going to be doing in the next few weeks. Sorry I didn't get to fit in this week the uh, speed weathering or the speed track laying which I promised but we are going to be doing those next week and we're also going to be looking at coal loads um, but of course the main thing next week is we're going to be starting doing these two boards behind me which we're going to start from scratch and take it all the way through to super detailing so we're basically going to be doing them as dioramas so it's going to be a 12 foot by 8 foot diorama which is going to be great because that's going to be enlarged eventually to form the whole of this marshalling yard extension so keep watching thanks again for um, liking and subscribing if you can do that would be brilliant and i will see you next week have a good weekend